be looking at the issue of remittance receipts by households in Ghana, and specifically looking at how they are distributed, and also the impact that these remittances have on the, um, these households' investment in basic education. So by investment in basic education, well, we, we, in terms of the um, variable that we use, we construct a variable which is an aggregation of all spending on children who are in basic school. That is from primary one to um, junior secondary school three. So primary one to GHS three. Um, by now, we are all familiar with the importance of remittances, um, its role in the development of developing countries. And um, this is attested to by the growth in various services relating to um, remittances, especially relating to international remittances. Now, um, we think that it's important for us to explain what we mean by remittances in our context. By remittances, we are referring to a cash or in-kind transfer from one household to another, and for which no direct or explicit repayment is required. So from the data set, we made sure that we were restricting ourselves to those transfers that meet um, these criteria. And, and those were the, the majority of transfers anyway, from household to household. Clearly, it's important to know the impact of remittances. There is often the perception that um, remittances are often used um, for consumption purposes uh, without much of it going into the investment um, decisions of the recipients. Um, so this is an attempt to look at the impact of remittances on a component of human capital being education of children. These are research questions. Um, the first one simply looks at the distribution of remittance receipts. And then we pose the question, what is the impact of remittance receipts on households' investment in basic education? And then the third one is basically um, a look at the implications of the first two, the responses or the answers to the first two questions on welfare distribution in Ghana. A lot of work has been done on remittances and um, for the purpose of this paper, I think the relevant ones are those to do with the impact of remittances. Now, there have been various studies on um, the impact of remittances on various aspects of well-being. Right, there are some that look at the impact of remittances on well-being as proxy by consumption expenditure um, per adult equivalent. There are those that look at the impact of remittances on agricultural productivity or also on, um, on education. Now, um, in terms of the impact of remittances on education, a lot of these have looked at the impact on um, schooling right, in terms of um, schooling, enrollment, or attendance. And for Ghana specifically, um, the two papers, two papers of note that I want to mention are those by Dima Brimpon and Asiedu, um, and also by Pigborn. Now, Dima Brimpon and Asiedu used GLSS data. They used um, you know, a number of the um, waves of the GLSS data sets and employed a pseudo-panel approach to look at the impact of remittances on investment in education. But um, they proxied investment in education by schooling and enrollment or attendance. Pigbone 
uh, project investment in education by schooling, um, by expenditure on schooling, but um, they focused on this one region of Ghana, the northern region. Um, I think they collected, I, I don't really remember the source of their data, but I don't think they used the GLSS, that's the Ghana Living Standard Survey. For this paper, we employ data from the most recent wave of the Ghana Living Standard Survey, which is the 2012-2013 data set. And um, in terms of methodology, um, for the first research question, we'll simply employ descriptive statistics um, to look at the uh, remittance receipts as well as remittance sizes. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at various categories of households and how these um, differ amongst these households. The second research question, which has to do with the um, analysis of the impact of remittances on investment in basic education, is carried out by employing a um, counterfactual framework. And I'll just quickly describe it in a more generic sense because um, you know, we, we adapted this depending on the particular flavor of the impact of remittances that we, we, we looked at. I will explain that um, soon. So essentially, this begins with a specification of an education expenditure equation. Um, and then we divide the sample into two, right? Um, a sample of households who receive remittances and households who do not receive remittances. Then using these subsamples of households, we then um, estimate the education expenditure for these different households. So essentially, we estimate um, an education expenditure, expenditure, sorry, an education expenditure um, regression for a remittance recipient scenario and also one for a non-recipient scenario. With this, we are then able to uh, estimate for each household, right, what that household's education expenditure would have been in a situation where that household were to receive remittances and also in a scenario where that household does not receive remittances. And then um, using the treatment effects literature, we are then able to um, calculate the average treatment effects on those who actually receive remittances, that's the ATAT, and also the average treatment effects for all households, irrespective of their remittance receipt status. Now, we also employ the propensity score matching approach to do something very similar. Um, very, very briefly, they, this is the, um, the, um, the equation or the regression, the outline that we used for the expenditure on education regression. Essentially, a very simple regression. On the left-hand side, we have the mean average spending on basic education. So um, for each household, we calculated the amount of money that that household spent on all those on all children of um, basic schooling age who are actually in school. Right. And um, so I think I've already explained what, what, uh, the, what follows. So uh, for each household, we are able to um, identify the, um, an estimate of its, its spending on, on basic schooling in a scenario where that household receives remittances and also in a scenario where that household does not receive remittances. 
Now, regarding the receipt of remittances um, and the expenditure on basic education, some relevant descriptive statistics are shown on this slide. Now, we, th there are various ways of categorizing households, right, in terms of their remittance receipt status. We find it useful to look at essentially four categories of households. Households that receive domestic remittances only, then households that receive international remittances only, and then households that receive both forms of remittances, and then finally, um, households who do not receive any remittance at all. Um, and these are the um, percentages. I, I was a bit surprised um, by these. I, I thought that probably uh, some of them will be higher than they actually are. Um, but it turns out that about 32% of households in Ghana receive remittances. And uh, of these, the, the, by far the dominant group right, um, is those households that receive domestic remittances only. And um, a very small percentage receive only foreign remittances, and even a much smaller percentage receives both domestic and foreign remittances. And um, in the third column, we see the average expenditure of these households on basic education. Right. Now, this particular table shows the, um, the mean amounts of remittances received. Now, the mean here calculated over those who actually receive the remittances, right? So, um, well, of course, the, the, the fourth category of households, those who do not receive remittances are irrelevant here, right? Because we are just interested in the mean remittances received. Now, we see that um, the highest in terms of mean amount of remittances received, right, um, is those who receive foreign remittances only, right, followed by those who receive um, both foreign remittances and domestic remittances, right. I think it's quite clear from this table that, yes, even though domestic, the receipt of domestic remittances is by far the most common in terms of magnitude, right, the, the receipt of international remittances is the most important. And for the whole country, the mean remittances received by all households that receive remittances is 848.4, basically 848.5 um, Ghana cities per year. Now, this chart throws further light on um, on the percentages of households that receive remittances. And what we've done here is we look at the percentages of households that receive remittances um, across various income quintiles. And we deducted from the various household incomes the um, amount of remittances that these households receive because the income variable has um, also remittances as part of it. So we deducted the remittances received from the income, from the incomes of the various households, and then we generated these quintiles. And we can see that, um, well, between domestic, the receipt of domestic remittances and foreign and international remittances, um, clearly, as we this is a confirmation that domestic, the receipt of domestic remittances is by far the, the more common one. And you see that very, very low percentages of households across the quintiles receive international remittances. And this is a similar um, chart for 
the mean amount of remittances received across quintiles. Now, these are exactly the two. Now, we can see that basically there is a reversal, right? When it comes to the mean amount of remittances received, is the receipt of international remittances that's most important. But when it comes to just the percentages, is the receipt of domestic remittances. Since I'm running out of time, let me just um, look at the results of the uh, impact evaluation of remittance receipts here. Um, I've already described generically the, the approach. Um, what I show here is um, the, 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 the results um, from essentially two approaches. The you, going by status and module in stata, the um, inverse probability weighted regression adjustment approach and also the propensity score matching approach. In a nutshell, um, for the impact of remittance receipt on households' investment in basic education, um, there isn't evidence that there's an impact, right? And then for the impact of, so we look at that and we also look at the impact of the receipt of domestic remittances only on households' investment in basic education. And we see that over here too, there isn't a favorable impact. Actually, um, the, the results suggest that there might be even a slight negative impact. But in terms of the impact of receipt of international remittances only on households' investment in basic education, we see that the, the, the results are quite um, strong, um, short, suggesting that there is um, a considerable favorable impact of the receipt of international remittances only on um, investment in, in schooling, in basic education. Um, the, the, for this one, for some reason, um, well, we couldn't get any out data generated an error message. So we, we, we couldn't get any results for the propensity score matching one. But I, I think that the, the main story um, doesn't change. To conclude, um, we note four main points that there appears to be very little effect on um, investment in basic education if we are looking at the receipt of remittances in general. However, once we take into account the receipt of international remittances, you know, we get a slightly, we get a different picture, right? But we have to note that those who receive international remittances are a very small percentage. But nevertheless, it's very important in influencing uh, investment in basic education. This strongly suggests that there's an opportunity for enhancing Ghana's human capital right through um, migrant remittances, especially international um, remittances. Thank you. Thank you.